This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. That's right, your ride is beginning right now. Hello everyone, it's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, and we are here to bring you a great hour of automotive news and entertainment. Les, there's so much going on in the auto industry. We've got a lot of vehicle reveals. We've got racing at Le Mans. Yep. We're, we're celebrating the 32, uh, the Deuce, the 32 Ford, 90 years of hot riding. A lot going on. Isn't it true? Boy, it's really true. And, uh, the ind- you know, the, the whole industry just keeps shifting and changing every week. Um, it's, it's Just think about the back to the beginning of the year, how things have changed. So, yeah, they, they uh, certainly going on. They certainly have, and we're going to start this hour with, as I said, new vehicles and uh, new technology. Toyota takes the wrap off its super-sized Sequoia, their big three-row SUV, and big. for something a little smaller, they also reveal the hybrid edition of the Corolla Cross. Absolutely, and you probably wonder, what are the best car colors to buy to avoid depreciation well we have the results of a new study and pink is not one of them (laughs) no that's right and honda announces their brand new hrv it's got more power more technology it's bigger and i think people are going to be pretty happy with this it's a real competitor now to the compact suv or cuv market that's right. Uh, and Hertz, remember Hertz? Yeah, they're back in business. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if they have any cars to Mar- rent. Mark but anyway, Fields is running it. He used to run. That's Ford. right. And Mark's a good guy. Uh, we know him. Uh, they have teamed up with Polestar to put um, electric cars in the dream fleet. Yeah, they're going to talk about that. And then talking tech, uh, we're going to look at some technology where Toyota has passenger safety on its radar. We'll tell you all about that. Yeah, it's cool. So we have a lot going on. We're going to talk a little later about how a riding lawnmower might be giving us a look into the future of charging those electric vehicles. Uh, Just stuff everywhere. And I'll have a review of the Kia K5 GT line, all-wheel drive, a little bit later on. But you're going to have a review of the... um, Mustang Mach E, and you got some right. pretty um, interesting takes on it. We're, I'm interested well, to hear what you think on that one. Yep, it's uh, it's kind of a, a lot of a lot of good and a lot of not so good, but I'll cover it. All right, all right. Well, that sounds great. We appreciate you being with us on Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. Don't forget to check us out cruisecontrolradio.com or all our Facebook and uh, Mm -hmm. YouTube pages and more. We will be right back after the break, so stay tuned.
Cruise Control. And we are back. I'm Les. He's Fred. And you know us. We're here every week. And as usual, we've got a bunch of stuff to cover. So let's start, Fred, with the uh, new Sequoia. Yeah. Because if you're going to start, you may as well start big. <laughs> yeah, go big or go home. <laughs> yes. That's it. Yeah. Reveal this week. The all-new 2023 Sequoia full-size SUV. This is one large customer, this thing. Three rows, of course. It is assembled yep. in the U.S. at the Toyota Motor Manufacturing Plant in Texas, in San Antonio. A big trend, by the way, white vehicles, polar white, refrigerator white, appliance white yep. vehicles with black wheels like that last shot. Um I actually have a uh, a GMC AT4 that's like that right now. But um, starting MSRP fifty eight thousand three hundred, it's uh, it's pulled along by a four hundred thirty seven horsepower, five hundred eighty three pound feet of torque engine, maximum towing capability nine thousand five twenty. Um, so well, that's you know that's that's big towing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, all of them get powered by the iForce Max, which is a twin turbocharged V6, 10 speed automatic behind all of them. And the engine features a unique motor generator within the bell housing between the twin turbo engine and that 10 speed automatic. Uh, this is a, this is a big, big machine. It really is. Uh, three rows, five grades of, you know, luxury. Um, they will be fitted with the multi, the brand new multimedia system that was first launched on the Tundra. And it has either, uh, by, it has both a large eight inch or available 14 inch touchscreen. And, uh, it's got things like wireless Android auto, yeah. and Apple CarPlay. You can just say simple phrases like, Hey, Toyota and wake the system up all the active safety systems um it is a big machine uh i wonder if you get the top of the line grade the the top of the grade the capstone luxury uh what this would cost it would be certainly more than fifty eight thousand. when you say i think it's safe to say nobody's going to be buying one of these for fifty eight thousand in the near future do you think do you think like we've seen with um you look at the jeep wagoneer and you look at yeah. do you think they're going to build an even larger version of this like jeep well has done? I, if if not larger uh, maybe um so optioned up mm -hmm. <laughs> Beyond but, that uh, capstone luxury grade, I, yeah, I think I think all of these manufacturers want these things to be a hundred thousand dollars or more. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know I don't know what they charge for the captain's reclining captain's chairs in the in the second row, <laughs> but you know that that's not a cheap option. Well, it comes with an actual captain so, to steer this oh, ship okay. around. Well, yes, you have to, he has to have seamanship papers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. large, obviously, this is great if you're towing a boat, if you're towing a horse trailer, if you're towing an RV, um, and you need, you know, a lot of room and a lot of luxury to do it. So uh, this has been a big, big thing for Jeep. As I said, the Wagoneer, that that has become, you know, the big deal. And they, in a sense, it kind of competes, too, with the Escalade. The Escalade is probably yeah. the oldest style of all these large SUVs out there, even though it's been refreshed, but it's still, you know, kind of a traditional style and they sell them. They sell a lot of them and they're all big money. They uh, do. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a machine, but, but what if you want something a little bit less large, less, and we're going to talk about this next one. I like this, the Toyota Corolla cross, because you know why? We always talk about it on the show. My Pontiac vibe is based on very, a Corolla, and this is yep. sort of the this is very sort of similar. The, yeah, very similar. It is based on a Toyota Corolla, and uh, they've come out with the hybrid version. We knew this was coming because it's been around in other countries around the world, 
And the nice thing about this, the Corolla Cross in the traditional form only has, I think, about 169 horsepower. People have said not fast. This hybrid has 194 horsepower, 8 seconds, 0 to 60 time. And That's respectable. Gets a manufacturer estimated 37 miles combined per gallon for for all grades and that's with all-wheel drive so we're going to talk a little bit more about this corolla cross when we come back so stay tuned to cruise control your on-air automotive magazine i'm fred staub he is les jackson we are just getting started so stay tuned we will be right back I have it. So, Les, uh, Le Mans this weekend, you going to stay up and watch any of it? Well, I'm going to, no, but I'm <laughs> going to turn it on first thing in the morning when I'm having coffee. Yeah. Uh, to watch the highlights and uh, realizing that, you know, that these teams have been shifting, you know, four hour, usually four hours between them for the drivers nonstop. And it's not like they're just driving across country. They're no. driving at an average speed of you know 115 120 and, for and the entire circuit this uh, is a street track four. basically it's 8.5 miles long yeah. there's 38 turns and Mulsanne straight has the famous Mulsanne straight they can get Mulsanne, but it but Mulsanne at least has the chicane in the middle to slow them because down because they, they were going too fast and crashing back in the by the uh, mid early mid seventies, you so, mean like going like over two hundred miles an hour and in the middle of the night with fog on the track? Exactly, and you know you can't. You just it's too dangerous. So that will tighten your posterior doing that, <laughs> don't you think? Well, yeah. I mean, it, what's amazing, of course, is that uh, you know they're, they're all superb drivers and they're all following each other. So it's not like you're all alone, most most people. Um, but still, it's nerve wracking. I uh, and how how you can concentrate? I, I just yeah, you know. and you can't sleep. Like if you're like okay, oh, you're no. off for four hours now. You're all amped up. <laughs> it would take you four hours to come off the adrenaline high. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Then you could sleep, but now you have to go back in the car. Now you have to go back. Yeah, uh, I think the coverage started already on Motor Trend. I think it started at 9.30, and the race actually yeah. starts around 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, I was watching it um, about an hour ago. Um, they were talking to some of the drivers. Um, the cars look like they're ready to go. Let me yeah. tell you, they're, every one of them was perfect. Of course, C8 Corvette. I believe there are two of them in the uh, race. Yep. So, yeah, there you go. All right, well, we're going to be back in a second, so stay tuned. Plenty of cruise control coming up. Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Before the break, we were talking about the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid, 37 miles to the gallon. Got all the safety features. It's got uh, a number of grades uh, to uh, trim. Uh, I believe there are four grades, if I'm right. Nope, more than uh, that. L E yeah. X L E S. S S E and X S E X S E soft Tex trim seats, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of a, a pretend leather, but it's really nice. Uh, standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yay Toyota! Remember, for the longest time, they just would do Apple CarPlay, and if you didn't have an Apple phone, you were out of luck. But they decided exactly. uh, they realized that was a problem. Now they're doing wireless. Um, 
compatibility uh, on some of the uh, less expensive vehicles. We don't know what this one will cost. It's got a 4G hotspot, standard Toyota safety sense. Um, I'm I'm excited to drive this. Like I said, it's sort of like the modern day version of the Pontiac Vibe. Um, That's yeah, and the Corollas are very pleasant to drive. You know, they don't feel like a little car. No. Um, and and everything's bigger, of course. But thirty-seven miles to the gallon. Also, you can yeah. get two-tone. I like the two-tone paint. Um, they have one that's sort of a tan. They call it acid dipped. Um, so yeah, there's another one I like called wind chill. Wind chill. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. I like that. A weather forecaster. Uh, so. There you have it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we know pricing, and I'm sure you and I will get into that and give it an at-the-wheel review when it becomes available, right? I'd go for the hybrid. How about you? Well, yeah. Um, I think it just makes sense, especially uh, in this day and age yeah. with $5 gas. You know, uh, if you're going to buy a new vehicle, get a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, if you are going to buy a new vehicle, what color do you get, Les Jackson? Uh, it, remember the time when all press cars were silver? Every one I, of them was silver, and we were like, what's yep. going on here? We used to make jokes about, yeah, apparently, they ran out of all other colors. Because <laughs> this was for years. You can in have the early it in 2000s. any color as long as it's silver. Everything was silver. And they, they kept saying, well, it's the it photographs well, the best. Yeah, you can see the lines and things. Well, yeah. ICcars.com did a study about vehicle depreciation by color and ranked them by the lowest to the highest depreciation. And it's kind of surprising here, <laughs> some of the colors. <laughs> uh, so from the lowest to the highest, the highest depreciating color is brown. You don't want to go back to that uh, earth tone days of the 70s. It's, earth shoes. it's depressing, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Although I did have a root beer brown uh, Escalade to drive, I thought that was pretty nice. But yeah, now gold is number thirteen. We were just looking at a sort of a gold, goldish tan in um, in that uh, Corolla Cross. Uh, black, believe it or not, black depreciates. It's number twelve out of the list. I'm I am glad of that because, as you know, I just don't like black cars. Mm. I just think it's a terrible color for a car. It's that it always looks dirty because it shows dirt. It, shows uh, it doesn't show the lines. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I just think it's a terrible color. Now, what's interesting is I see cars number 10 out of the rank of 14 colors for depreciation is silver. Maybe it's just because yeah. there's so many cars out there that are silver. I think that's true. And a lot of them are grayish silver, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, still depreciates. Number nine, the exciting beige. Kind of, you can wear your beige uh, yes. uh, le leisure suit while you sit in your beige <laughs> vinyl seat. Yeah, I, I have a, go, a beige Nehru jacket. <laughs> there you go. You could wear that. 60s. You could wear that and and depreciate yeah. at uh, three years uh, you four, by 14.4%. You're right. I see cars.com study. Um, and then gray. I like some of these grays. Um, the car I'm going to review this week is the gray, but they say that uh, that depreciates. That's number seven on the list. And then blue. I I always I'm just a fan of blue. I like blue. Well, colors. I I think blue remains a pretty popular color. Yeah, obviously, I, I, I like them both, light or dark blue. You know, sometimes yeah. the navy blues look nice, don't they? Oh yeah. Um, green. I never green. You know, it's interesting. I never understood British racing green because green was always thought of as a hard luck color for race cars. You never want to make it. Well, there, of course, there are four different British racing greens, depending on the company manufacturing the car. Okay. You know, Triumph is different from MG, which is different from Jaguar. Um, I, I've always liked green cars, but I like a deep, dark, slightly metallic greens. All right. Here's a safe bet. Red at number four. 
Hmm. still depreciates 14 percent well the average depreciation is 15 so all right so it's a little bit less purple yeah. have you seen, i don't get it have you seen purple <laughs> factory cars i do they make I, those well dodge oh dodge you know. does yeah um but i don't get that what purple's not by any means a popular color it's certainly out there it's certainly out there. It's yeah. not like if you said, well, I want to order a mainstream car. By the way, no. we may have jumped over a number 11 white. I've never been a fan of white cars. They always look like a fleet car to me. Yeah, uh, I, I will say I, from a practical standpoint, I like white because You've had some white. it's You've comfortable had in the Corvette. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, now, so least depreciating number one and two, orange. Don't get it. That was a big, remember that copper yeah. color orange was a big thing a few years ago? And that uh, Nissan old still Corvette war bonnet yellow, oh, which was an I hated orange. That. Oh, a terrible color. I had a car that was sort of close to that and it looked faded. And I was like, this looks faded. Yeah. So I painted it yeah. blue. But uh, a yellow is the number one least appreciating color. I don't understand that. I wouldn't buy like a yellow Corvette. People like that. Remember when they had the Ronald McDonald Corvette? It was bright red seats. Oh, yellow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, one drove past us at Carlisle and someone said it looked good. It was like, get your eyes checked, man. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Can you drive the, can you, can you work the three pedals with the clown shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, yellow. I don't know. I, I don't honestly, I don't know anybody that likes a yellow car. Yeah, yeah. Well, that had a three percent depreciation, according to iccars.com, of 4.5 percent. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, maybe there are people out there that like yellow. What, what do you think? Let us know in the comments <laughs> if uh, what your favorite color is. I think you're pretty much safe with red black silver uh and probably white that's those are yep. the most popular colors i believe um you can't go wrong with red i like red uh, well they or, call it resale red for resale a good reason red. yeah it pops it pops red with black wheels i like red with black wheels and uh either a saddle or a gray interior yeah that's nice although i have to say I, I do like some BMWs that are the dark metallic blue with the saddle interior. Yeah, I like that. And I've seen some Mercedes where they're very nautical. They have this light blue leather interior with that dark metallic blue. It seems nautical to me somehow. I don't know why. Well, of course, <laughs> I live for the sea. So. <laughs> and the dance. We know that, Les Jackson. <laughs> and the dance. Yeah. We, <laughs> hey, we're glad you're along with us uh, for this ride on Cruise Control. We're having fun, so we hope you're having fun, too. Don't forget to check us out. Uh, you can look at our YouTube page or Facebook page. Mm -hmm. All those links are on cruisecontrolradio.com. Coming up, we're going to talk about Nissan Altima. Uh, yes, Nissan still makes great sedans. And they've revised this one. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. And also, uh, we're going to talk tech about lawnmowers and how they might kind of forecast the future of electric vehicles. What are we talking about? We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Les. That guy is Fred, and we're going to talk about a car. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, a sedan. You know, remember remember those? What? What are you yeah. talking about? No, it, you know, it's kind of low. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And easy remember. to get into. I kind of remember those days. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the Nissan Altima, which is has always been a really good mid-sized car. Yeah. Remember, uh, and the, how long ago, Les, were mid-sized sedans the big thing we talked about and very competitive? Everyone was always bringing out a new vehicle. It was the biggest segment. Yeah. The hardest, most competitive segment. And that was up through, certainly through 2010. Interesting. Um, and it may be even 2012 or so. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden things started happening. But fortunately, <laughs> the people at Nissan said, yeah. hey, we make a good one. People like it. It's reliable. We're going to make it. Okay. And the interesting thing here is it is available with all-wheel drive. So that's not an issue. Yeah, that's right. If you like all-wheel drive. Would you get and, a sedan with all-wheel drive? Well, I, I wouldn't spend extra money for it around here in the Mid-Atlantic because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm fine without it. If I lived up there in the Northeast with you, yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. Well, um, what's cool about the Altima, which is, again, sedans are not real popular. They've got eight different models. That's crazy. That's, well, of course, all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, so on. But Sure. S it's S V S R S L S R V C Turbo, <laughs> front-wheel drive. <laughs> That, well, you've lost me by by now. Yeah, uh, these are these. This is the new model for 2023. It will be available in the fall. New exterior colors, new materials, upgraded technology, a 12.3 inch HD color display, uh, Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. Sounds like Android Auto is still plugged in, and Apple CarPlay is yeah. wireless. Yeah. Although you can get adapters for that now, so to make it wireless. Um, so let's talk about engines here. You get a choice of two four cylinders, a two liter variable compression engine. I drove a couple of vehicles with this, not a bad engine at all. And a uh, advanced 2.5 liter double overhead cam engine. Um, and they say that, uh, they give the performance of six cylinders, but with four cylinder fuel economy, uh, I, it looks like the uh, the variable compression turbo engine requires 93 octane, delivers 248 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque that is using uh, that higher octane fuel. Right. 34 on the highway, 29 combined. Not bad. Yeah, but the base engine uh, is, is really impressive at... 28 city and 39 highway. Yeah. And then you, know, you got to look at that carefully. Yeah. You got to look, look at that carefully. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, it gets pro pilot assist, which works really well. Um, steering the car with radar sensors and electronic uh, control modules. Uh, I've used it on some rainy nights where it just holds the lane really well, especially when you can't see the lines. It's not going to. Yeah. It's not, you can't sit back and take a nap, but it's, it is it's not for reading the newspaper. No, it's, but it does help yeah. you. It does. It, it does. does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm kind of interested to drive this. I think it, I think it would be good. I love those wheels. I think that's a really nice factory wheel. Design. I do. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's becoming rare that you and I both like the same wheel. Yeah. Um, Very luxurious. Interior. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Nice stuff. Okay. Well, we'll be reviewing that as well when it comes out. Um, and I think that's that's interesting stuff. Now, uh, we were talking about Le Mans uh, underway uh, as we speak. And um, we should talk a little bit about what Cadillac's doing there with their Project GTP, their hypercar. 
uh, which will be uh, running in 2023. It will contest the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and the FIA World Endurance Championship, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It won't be there this year. They just revealed it. Sure, sure. Looks corvette -y. Well, listen to this. The new race car will be powered by the all-new 5.5-liter double overhead cam V8. Isn't that the one that's going in the Z06? Uh, seems to me it is. Yeah. My theory is we may be looking at a, a revved up version of a C8 based car that will be sold by Cadillac. Well, you know, it, this, this gives Corvette the best of all worlds because for a number of years now, Corvette has become a world-class car. Mm -hmm. without exception but but it's still kind of considered an american muscle car mm. you know? and what this cadillac cat catavet <laughs> uh, would be is is the you know the, the world class corvette based expensive uh car that that would make the Corvette division and the Cadillac division, um, a lot of money and a lot of reputation. Yes. I mean, just look, looking at this vehicle, you could adapt yeah. this. Look at it. It has the form factor, mid-engine form factor, especially yep. when you look from above, you would make the passenger compartment wider. You would make the fenders enclosed. And uh, you would not have, unfortunately, that big tail on the back, which looks great. Looks like a vertical stabilizer from an airplane. It, <laughs> it, yeah, it actually looks like a one of the old British Vulcan bombers from yeah, the back. Yeah, I love that look. Oh, oh, it's cool. I mean, that is a neat looking car. But uh, I think that's what we're seeing now. Am I going too far saying that? I think I think this Project GTP is not only a race car. But it will be the basis of a C8 based, very high end, two hundred thousand yep. dollar limited edition um, Cor uh, uh, Corvette based Cadillac. I completely agree. Yeah, it, it just makes sense in every way. Yeah, and um, you know, as we move to electric, it will be electric. I don't know when it will happen. If there it probably won't be a gas version of it, I'll, I'll, I'll put on my pronosticator hat. It probably won't happen until the Corvette changes over to electric power. Because I don't, I think Cadillac yeah. wants to go all electric. I think they're probably not going to build a gas version of it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think maybe the Cadillac uh, version, Corvette based version. Uh, will be the experimental uh, models for electric power. And yep. I think it'll it'll then pass down from Cadillac to Corvette. Interesting. You're interesting. So you're saying that will be the first electric powered Corvette. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff, Les Jacks. Well, let's talk a little tech. <laughs> this is bizarre because we like to get bizarre <laughs> sometimes here. Honda's new lawnmower may influence electric vehicles their new riding lawnmower they have uh honda loves to play around with mowers they have a thing called the mean mower which has a 200 yep. horsepower fire blade engine and can run at 151 miles an hour i picture cutting grass that fast you'd be done in minutes right not well you'll be dead in minutes <laughs> that that um, turn at the end of your property before the fence will be hard that's right um I, I'm not, who would ride a, 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 I don't care how modified it is, a, a mower uh, at 151 miles an hour? Not me, but uh, CarBuzz, our friends over at CarBuzz, they have their person in the United States patent office, and they suggest that Honda is working on an autonomous travel working machine, which is some kind of generic language which has the ability to travel to a charging station all by itself. And as far as they can determine, CarBuzz, hmm. it is a electric 
riding lawnmower that when it needs to charge, it will just drive itself over and and charge up its battery. This is very much like the Roombas. They yeah, go back to the uh, yeah. docking station and they charge up. And this was thought that when we have fully autonomous vehicles in the future, uh, they may, one use for this might be to tell parents that your child has arrived at the uh, final location. Yep. Or, or they could just go off an electric vehicle and charge itself when you're, you know, have it parked at the train station or something and then return to the parking space. So a little bit of a talking tech. When we come back, Les is going to review the Mach-E Mustang. He's got some interesting takes on it. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. We'll be right back. Hey, Les, um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, 32 Deuce. Um, yeah. Peterson Museum is celebrating the 90th anniversary of the iconic 1932 Ford. Um, and it is, um, they're going to have a, a big shindig tomorrow night with Billy Gibbons, who has a very nice, a uh, couple of very nice 32 Fords. Actually got to hang out with him and sit in one of his. And Henry Ford III. It's called the Deuce Gala, live performance by Billy Gibbons, an award ceremony, a once-in-a-lifetime live auction. It's all happening Sunday, June 12th at the museum's annual Deuce Day Cruise-In. Sounds like a fun gathering, doesn't it? Uh, it does uh, sound like a fun gathering. Yeah. Um, of course, anything at the Peterson is worth going to. Tickets are two fifty, and it consists of a 45 Minute performance from Gibbons, access to live au auction, complimentary dinner, open bar, admission to the annual Deuce Day Cruise In, taking place the, fo the following day. And uh, capping the weekend is the Peterson's annual Deuce Day Cruise In with the museum's greatest hot rods, including several uh, Ambler winners. And uh, it will be fun stuff. 90 years of the 32 Ford. Isn't that crazy? Well, you know, the, the 32 Ford was instant. Um, most of it happened after the war, but it was the it was instantly, once it was built, the car that all of America wanted to customize. There, there, no, no other model in history has been customized as much as 32 Fords. What do you think happened to all those fenders they peeled off? Did they just throw them away? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Some cool cars, though. Um, yeah, Billy Gibbons, I got to sit in it. Actually, it was built by SoCal Speed. Very traditional, skinny tires, dog dish hubcaps, flathead. Wow. Um, brand new flathead. Because Gotta have a flathead. Flathead was used by a small scout vehicle. Uh, in the French army, and they hmm. had them uh, NOS, you know, st still sitting wow. in, uh, in Cosmoline, basically. And uh, he got one of them and got some uh, vintage hot rod parts on it. And, uh, yeah, 32 Ford, V8 Ford. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. little true thing about Bill yep. Gibbons, he makes his own guacamole at Mexican restaurants. Really? He has them. He brings it and mixes it right at the table. So... Hmm. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if okay. that will be part of the performance. I don't. Have you that. had his guacamole? I have. I actually had lunch with him uh, a number of years ago, and and he gave me a tour of his uh, vehicles in the Peterson Museum. Got to sit in his yeah. two four. Cadzilla. Cadzilla was not there, and neither was the Eliminator, but a lot of his other other cars were. So, and I did like his thirty thirty two Ford. He said, "Come on back. You can drive it when it's not in the museum." I haven't done yet yet. Maybe one no. day. That would be fun. He yeah, said he showed his then to... girlfriend how to drive stick on that car. And I said, that's a great hmm. way to learn <laughs> on that. <laughs> so, hey, why not? Hey, we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> 
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I am going to give an at-the-wheel review right now of the Mustang Mach-E. Mm -hmm. um, I had a week in it and uh, rang it out <laughs> pretty well, <laughs> friend. What one uh, did my, you have, Les? Uh, I had the uh, premium uh, all-wheel drive, which... Uh, it's kind of rare for the Mid-Atlantic. Um, rapid red metallic exterior, black perforated Active X, which is kind of a fake leather uh, interior. Nice, nice upholstery, comfortable. Um, it's it's a Mustang. I mean, when you, I know there, there's a lot of people talking about. Well, it's not really a Mustang. It's an SUV. No, when you when you look at it from the outside, you get in. And you sit down, it feels Mustangy, mm -hmm. uh, if that's a word. Uh, it feels much smaller, feels smaller inside. Yeah, like you're driving a you know a, a four a four seat uh, sports car, mm -hmm. uh, sports sedan. Mm -hmm. um, and this has the optional uh, eighty eight kilowatt uh, extended life battery. What kind of range does that give you? 305 miles. Yeah, that's plenty. <clears throat> uh, plenty. Absolutely plenty. Um, now, is it fast? You betcha. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, you, if you stand on this thing, you'd, you'd better have some horizon in front of you. I'm just and, showing. And no, no police around you. I'm just showing the one I drove, which was the first edition uh, yep. in that blue, grabber blue. Actually, and that's a very pretty blue. I like that. Oh, I, I painted a car that color. It wasn't a Mustang Mach-E, though. They didn't exist back then. Yeah, it's cool. So, um, as you said in your review, you know, you had all of the usual um, features that you expect in any decent um, modern vehicle today. Um, now, some of the things that, that I found really uh, useful and and kind of fun uh the phone key mm -hmm. you, you you set it up oh yeah so you can talk to the car through your phone yep tell it to start tell it to pre-air condition whatever um and the one pedal driving did you do that i love one pedal driving on on electric vehicles i really enjoy yeah. it it's like a golf cart basically well it's and it's in traffic you know i drove into dc Mm -hmm. uh, with it in the middle of the day, uh, it's awfully nice just to be using one pedal. I agree. I love it. Uh, and it's, you know, as soon as you let up on the pedal, it stops. Boy, does it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It stops. Oh, yeah. It's, and, and as far as electric vehicles, um, I, I went, you know, I used up all the miles. Um, and it worked out uh, to... Um, Basically, it's 37 kilowatts per hundred or 37 miles of kilowatt usage uh, for every uh, 100 miles you drive. So if you work out with mid-Atlantic electric rates to go 100 miles in the Mach-E, uh, it works out to between $5.55 to $6. How much is that kilowatt hour? Well, it's... Uh, that's I'm averaging 15 and a half cents a kilowatt hour, oh, which is typical through this whole region of the mid Atlantic. Boy, that's expensive. That's almost double what, what I have up here. Yeah. Like and this and is chain. assuming, this is assuming you're part, you're charging it in the middle of the day when the rates are the highest. But the point is you can't drive a gasoline powered anything this size. Right. A hundred miles for $6, especially no, now. That's true. Uh, so it's it's a deal. Um, and you know overall it's 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 a it's a fine machine. It's well put together. it's it's um, well appointed. I think the interior could have been a little nicer. I'm sure a higher level uh, would have been. but uh, I, I was disappointed with it. okay. And, and I was disappointed with it for a, enough that I wouldn't buy it. If, if I was out shopping for it, I wouldn't buy it because the, the center screen, which is vertical, 
Right. Um, it, and it's big and it's very useful, but you couldn't dim it down far enough at night. It's mm -hmm. just too, a little too bright. Um, the screen also blocks the center air vent controls where you want to run that little thumb wheel to shut off the, yeah. the airflow. You have to twist your hand uh, behind it. And that's, you know, come on. <laughs> you, you, you know what and I it, think we'll see, Les? I think we'll see them rotatable. Some Pol, I yeah. believe Polestar is doing that where you can rotate the display. Obviously, yeah, it's not available. That's right. Cars. Or electrify the control. Um, the panoramic roof. Uh, does yours? Yeah, yours had the panoramic roof. Yeah. There, there's no screen under yeah. that. And in, you know, I drove this when it was 92 degrees here. And yes, the air conditioning system cooled it off, but it's really hot inside and uh, i just you know i want to scream they they did treat the roof i did a little research on that when you told me about that earlier in the it's week. a low e glass I yeah know. yeah but uh they do sell aftermarket screens which i think oh, okay. i would have to you know i have to would have to get one um did did i don't remember did you run into uh frustration with the nav system uh you know, to be honest, I don't think I had to use the nav system. Um, um, I deliberately, uh, I needed to use it, and I deliberately used it instead of my uh, phone-connected nav system. Okay. It was, it just wasn't terribly. And that's a Ford uh, Sync system. That's a pretty user-friendly standard, standard yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, it put me a mile and a half away from where I wanted to go. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did, well, I walked. Uh, and uh, and now you know how I am about the ride, the smoothness of a ride. Sure. But um, you've never heard me say that my passengers complained about the ride. Okay. And everybody did. Wow. Everybody said that's all wheel drive, so it's heavier. Right. Um, everybody said, boy, this thing is is choppy and harsh and clunky sounding underneath. Mm -hmm. um, it really that alone would have made me not choose to buy one do you think it was uh, certainly sporty? the all-wheel drive version um and 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 that was just with the whisper mode which is the <laughs> softest <laughs> Quiet, <yeah. laughs> the other modes you don't even want to know so <laughs> overall um it's a, it's a really impressive vehicle it is a mustang uh, it is fast it looks it's good got, from outside it's, it looks great from outside, uh, great visibility out yep. from inside. Um, but it, you know, it, it just, it didn't appeal to me enough um, I'm not to make me want it. I remember that screen, like uh, having to move the slider for certain things and it took yeah. like two tries. I don't. I, I don't see why we have to eliminate buttons just because Elon Musk put a screen up. There. Yeah, I, I agree. And or, that's not anything about electric cars. It's just any car. No. I'd rather have a knob or a button to say, oh, there you go. There's the there's yeah. the I mean, uh, there's the defroster. It's a great electric car. Yes. Uh, it just as it is at the moment, it's not a great car. Gotcha. No, I, I understand. What was the price yeah. on yours? Fifty five one hundred uh, plus uh, eleven hundred for destination, which isn't a bad price. No, that's all wheel drive. And, uh, you know, but, you know, uh, not that you can buy it. for that <laughs> price. We're going to have a story next hour about uh, Farley, uh, the head of Ford says people are ordering cars and that is making a big difference the dealers are not marking yeah. them up so we'll talk about that well thanks for that at the wheel review of the mustang mach e all wheel drive les jackson time for me to say i'm fred stop i'm les jackson we're gonna see you down the road bye <laughs>